Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome back to the channel. Um, right, as per usual, before I go any further, um, a massive thank you to everybody that uh, replied to the post that I put on my profile um, two or three days ago. I've um, been going through a bit of a rough time over the last week or two. Um, I thought it was one thing, uh, so I decided to put a post on basically saying that sort of feeling a bit down, a bit sort of lost. Um, just completely disinterested in everything. Um, is anybody else feeling this way? Now I thought it was one thing, but everybody else thought it was something else. So, um, thank you ever so much for everybody that replied um, to that post. Um, I'm not going to go into the details of it. Um, if you want to see what was going on, just pop over to the uh, the personal profile page of mine, and you'll uh, you'll see how it kind of went down. Um, but it was such a help. Um, I've started to turn things around uh, which will hopefully make things a lot easier um, i'll just do a couple of quick special thank yous um, to uh, diane who doesn't have facebook or youtube or anything like that um, but i'm sure um, other people will sort of let her know diane is a colleague of mine she's been absolutely brilliant donna um, another colleague of mine thanks so much don you've been such a help this week and michelle uh, my team leader who has been absolutely awesome um, you've all been brilliant um, a quick shout out to Lee Lee Wood uh, another team leader who's always got time to stop and talk to me um, so I really really appreciate that mate um, and as I say I appreciate everybody that replied to that post um, it kind of brought everything into stark focus I now roughly know what it is I'm up against um, and as I say I am starting to turn things around so as I say, thank you so much to everybody that took the time uh, to reply to the post and everybody that was just at least thinking of me. Um, <clears throat> it's been very much appreciated and believe it or not, you have helped um, more than you will ever know. Uh, so thank you to all of you for that. Um, right. Uh, well, Jason, you were saying, yeah, uh, we were talking about Mother's Day and I was saying I've just got to get through Mother's Day, uh, which would have been last week for you, but I'm recording this on Mother's Day. Um, at what time we got 7.41 um, and Jason said yes Sunday will be hard for you just watch the Hobbit trilogy that will kill nine hours <laughs> then watch Oppenheimer keep that mind busy mate <laughs> I don't know about that uh, Mark you said rather shit in my hands and clap than watch Oppenheimer <laughs> Jason video please no <laughs> no please don't <laughs> no I can do without that uh, so that that's the light hearted side of it um so as I say, thanks for that, guys. Much appreciated. Um, a quick hi to some new subscribers. Uh, my subscribers have crept up to 131. I didn't even notice um, until I looked this morning. Um, so morning to Mondo Chelovec Movies um, and Night Owl Movie Talk. I've subscribed to both of your channels. Thank you so much for subscribing to mine. Uh, very much appreciated. Welcome to the uh, to the channel. Um, hope you like... Um, the content i assume you do if you've subscribed to it um, i'm looking forward to checking out your content at some point very very soon um, i had a brief sort of sort of uh, flick through this morning and love the look of what i've seen so i'm going to be taking in some of your videos and probably commenting on them <laughs> so uh, thanks ever so much guys for subscribing um, you may be interested to know there is also a facebook group um, attached to this which i believe you'll find in the bio feel free to pop over uh, click the join um, obviously you will be accepted straight away um, and we uh, we basically just talk about new movies old movies there's a lot of banter going on it's a very busy brilliant um, friendly group uh, which I think y you'll all get a kick out of so um, I look forward to hopefully seeing you uh, you uh, join the uh, Facebook group because you'd be a very welcome addition to that to judging by the videos that I've seen uh, um, on your channel so uh, look forward to that right I'll start with comments on last weekend's well last week's video um, as I usually do Rick <clears throat> ah Rick thanks for the shout out Tony mate you're more than rent uh, 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 welcome here we go <laughs> one night rental is my second movie although the first movie I did isn't released till May 
Um, I've signed on for two more movies to shoot later this year. I'd, I'd be very interested to know what your first movie was, mate. Can you send me a message on that one? Um, I wouldn't mind taking a look at that. And I'm definitely looking forward to taking in one night rental. Um, that poster that you put up on the group, you've got some very positive feedback on it. Very, very positive. I'm really, really pleased for you. Um, and I'm hoping I can, well, I will be adding mine to it as soon as I've uh, had a look at it. Um, I'm not sure when the Blu-ray ships. I think it's sometime this month can't wait um i'll be watching it on literally the first weekend that uh, that i get the uh, the disc through so look forward to that mate um you were saying about gregory's girl gregory's girl haven't seen that since i was at school i'll have to catch it again charming film lovely film um i just never get bored of it absolutely not terrifier 2 was good although i felt it could shed 30 minutes off the run time <laughs> It could shave two and a half hours off for me and I still wouldn't watch it. <laughs> it's just... Oh, no. I mean, I've been over this so many times now. Extreme violence does absolutely nothing for me and it really doesn't. Um, I just about managed to make it through the original Terrifier. Um, but as soon as I read about the bedroom scene and watched it on the smallest screen possible, I thought, you're never going to make it through this. Um, so uh, it would be a very brave move on my point to... Uh, um, to attempt a viewing of Terrified 2. Um, late Night with the Devil sounds good. If it's like Ghost Watch, I'll love it. Glad you're okay, Tony. You make great video as always. Cheers, Rick. Uh, that Late Night with the Devil looks bloody awesome. Um, I think it's a Shudder movie, so we should hopefully be getting it fairly soon, I would think. But it looks amazing. I can't wait to see that. Um, just using the format of a live TV broadcast. As soon as I saw the trailer, I thought Ghost Watch but dialed up to like 9, 10, 11, 12. It looked amazing. So yeah, I can't wait for that one. Guy, great as always, mate. Cheers, Guy. Nice hoodie. I've had that for years, years and years. It was just bloody freezing down here and the heating wasn't working um, last week. So I had to wear it, uh, but I'm back to my old, um, whatever it is, Leicester Tigers t-shirt. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I love that. I've got a t-shirt as well with the same thing, which I'll um, probably wear when it's uh, when it's getting a little bit warmer. Ideally, I want to find a place that does um, polo shirts uh, with movie posters on them. I'm gonna have a look, see if I can find a place that personalizes them. Um, I would love one with the Kingdom of the Spiders poster on the front. I did find one about a year ago, um, but as per usual, I held off and hesitated for a couple of months and by the time I went back it had been taken down so um, I'm going to be looking for that at some point you go on tow uh, two hours is not a slog when you have an attention span it is for me <laughs> they take a bit of doing when you do them that long um, and I think after an hour that's when the stammers start coming in um, so I, I think an hour is about right guy um, that that's what I'm going to aim for and anything that's left over after an hour I can tip over to the next week, um, which gives me a bit of a head start on next weekend's video. Um, I will occasionally go over probably an hour and a quarter, possibly an hour and a half, but um, it's not something that I'm aiming for. Um, if I can get all this done in an hour, that would be absolutely brilliant because it gives me the rest of the day to watch movies, um, you know, update the website, which is another thing that I'm planning on doing. Um, to take my mind off what's been going on I'm relaunching the website I mean it never went away but I haven't put anything on it for over a year and the website as you know was my original baby it's what started all this um, I've got um, a letterboxd account and I do brief reviews on there of whatever I watch um, but the website is where I used to really concentrate and do the, the, the best reviews I used to think um, so um, I had a bit of a problem with the theme on it a couple of weeks ago, uh, probably a little bit longer than that actually, the, the actual theme of the website went down which made it look all sort of um, weird. So I found a site called Fiverr, I've used it before um, <clears throat> and you can employ uh, a guy for probably $10-$15 who will put a problem right for you straight away all you need to do obviously is give them your your details they're all very trusted i know what you're all thinking you know be careful who you give your details to and this that, and the other but these people have got um i believe they're vetted by fiverr and they've all got sort of five star reviews um testimonials under testimonials 
detailing work that they've done um, and it will only be the um, uh, the, the uh, sort of the email address and stuff just to get into the uh, the website and correct it basically and get it back to how it was three four weeks ago so that I can start working on it again um, and that will be my main focus um, for the next few weeks is getting the website up and running um, streamlining letterboxed uh, concentrating on the group and also YouTube and the videos obviously um, so Bob Marley, um, I'll watch it. I love biopics. I'm looking forward to watching that one. Um, I think the soundtrack will be excellent. It, the, the movie itself has got mixed reviews. It's kind of all over the place. It's very much a Marmite movie from what I understand. You're either going to love it or hate it, but I will give it a go. Um, question, have you listened to my podcast recommendation, recommendations yet? <laughs> no. I have listened to one episode of uh, the Wheezing Groaning Sound, the Doctor Who one that you recommended. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I've just got to download a few more. Um, I'm now, again, starting to get into podcasts. Um, I did kind of let them go over the last probably two, three weeks, uh, but I'm now picking them up again, so I will be taking those podcasts in. Um, my new obsession at the moment, my God, I've officially got old. Um, I looked um, on Google Podcasts, and they've got BBC Sounds on there, and... I've started listening to a serial every day. It only lasts for 15 minutes a day. It's a soap, The Archers. I know what you're all thinking. What the fuck, man? <laughs> I listened to one episode and I thought, you know, I've never listened to one episode of The Archers ever. It's been running for like 10 million years. And I really enjoyed it. And I thought, I'll just listen to the next one, see how this turns out. Listen to that one. And it's like, oh, God, we've got another situation. I'll just, just see what happens with this one. And before I know it, I'm hooked. So 15 minutes a day, just chill out with the archers. So I will be getting round to your recommendations, but the archers is my new um, sort of podcast obsession at the moment. I've got a few episodes to catch up on, probably like 9,000. No, I've, I've started up to date. Um, I fell behind um, over the last couple of weeks, so I'm, I'm sort of catching up with that. Uh, but I will be listening to uh, the two that you've sent me for sure. Mad Max 2 is fantastic, you bloody heathen. <laughs> it more than likely is, and I'm guessing that the next time I watch it, um, I will enjoy it a lot more than the uh, the first time I did. Um, I get the feeling it was I, I probably watched it on the wrong day or wasn't really up for it, but I did it anyway, and it, it kind of backfired on me. Um, but I will give the whole trilogy another watch um, as I do love the first one and I like the third one um, it was just the second one that didn't quite hit the spot but um, we'll put that right um, what have I got here one night rental huge congratulations to Rick nice to have an actor in the group it is it is absolutely and that's why I've been asking about his first movie um, wouldn't it be nice to follow an actor's rise um, to the uh, the heights of Hollywood and Oscars I know you probably <laughs> <laughs> not even thinking that far ahead Brit, but we are so but yeah it is good to have an actor in the group i mean that's what we're all about isn't it um and you put if you ever want to come on higgis to talk about it give me or callista a shout um that would be something to guest on there uh, rick definitely uh, re stephen king the scene we missed out i asked about this last week you were talking about stephen king's it on your um podcast and <clears throat> And you mentioned a scene in the book um, that was probably completely unfilmable. It was unfilmable, and if it was unfilmable, it's probably unbroadcastable. Um, and you wouldn't even allude to what it was. Um, and you put here the scene, I, I asked what it was, and you said the scene we missed out. Once you get to it, you'll know. If me and Violet are staying away from it, then you know it's bad. Blimey. <laughs> It's made me want to uh, race ahead with that, actually, and uh, get this book finished. I've got about another 11 hours, so all of this must happen in that last section, the last quarter of it. Um, so I'm looking forward to finding out what this is all about. Um, will it shock me? Who knows? Let's see. Um, let's see. Doctor Who. Um, oh, yeah, well, we're talking about Power of the Daleks, weren't we? I've just finished that one. Um, told you you'd love that story. I watched it in black and white as well. Just prefer the black and white episodes to remain that way. I tend to agree with you on this one, Guy. Um, I did have the choice of watching colour or black and white. And as much as I'm sure the animation looks stunning in colour, 
it's a black and white story. It's from 1966 or seven. That is how it was meant to be. So that is how I will watch it. And I will watch all future Trouton episodes that I get hold of that have been animated or reconstructed. I will watch those um, in black and white as well because that's how they were. So thanks for that guy, much appreciated. Uh, Dave Taylor, my old cohort from work. Tony, I'm gonna watch Rocket Man again. We were talking about biopics. Um, I did enjoy that one. I thought it was all right. Um, <clears throat> I think you could go into the four guy blind. You don't need to watch the series first. I don't think so anyway. Um, I more than likely will have a look at the movie at some point. Um, I'm going to struggle to watch the whole of the series before the film comes out. So I think the film will probably come first. Um, let's see. Mel Gibson movies. Uh, we we're talking about Mel Gibson movies and I asked whether there were any Mel Gibson movies that you guys didn't like. Um, and you put, I wasn't too impressed with Bird on a Wire or Air America, but you've only seen them once. I've not seen either of them, so I can't comment on them. Bird on a Wire co-starred Goldie Horn, I believe. Um, and I remember seeing the trailer and thinking it looked all right, uh, but I've never actually watched the film, so I can't comment on that one. Um, as you say, sometimes you watch a movie when you're not in the right frame of mind, as I've just said with Mad Max 2. Um, Attack Force Z, a World War II movie, sounds like a bit of a turkey. I remember that being in the video shop. Um, and thinking at the time, Mel Gibson made this. I didn't watch it, um, but it just looked like um, a kind of a low-budget platoon or something like that. So I tended to stay away from it. Um, but you mentioning that title has made me curious to... Uh, to maybe take a look, um, but you put, but I see it has Sam Neill in it, so it can't be all bad. Um, so I might see if I can find it somewhere. Um, I'll let you know if I happen to find a copy of that. I would imagine it's fairly rare nowadays. Um, as I say, I remember it being in v on VHS in the, uh, the store, but I don't remember ever watching it. So thanks for that, Dave, much appreciated. Jason K, our Ginger Ninja, another awesome, if somewhat shorter video, uh, but still hoping we get through the work day. That's good to know, mate. Um, as I say, an hour I think is going to be enough, uh, for me anyway, and I'm fairly sure it will be for you as well, um, but we'll see how we go. I've got a cinema down the road, and there is one that I go to for those classic horror movies, so I will make sure I get some pics for the Facebook page. I'll be sure to get more photos of the foyer for you. Uh, look forward to that. I love seeing pictures of other people's local flea pits, cinemas. Um, so yeah, I look forward to seeing pictures of the foyer or any part of your local cinema. Uh, look forward to that. And you put, there's a cinema that I went to last night that will be hosting a film every month from the 80s and 90s. And it's the old classics. Last night was Batman 1989. Yes, the Michael Keane, Jack Nicholson blockbuster. Brilliant movie. I think that was the last Batman film that I truly, really enjoyed. Um, I thought Batman Returns was all right. It kind of got a bit boring after that. Um, and I've not bothered with any of the others. Um, apart from the Batman with Robert Pattinson, which I, I did quite enjoy. It wasn't brilliant, but I, I, I did enjoy it a lot more than I thought I would. Especially with a runtime of three hours. I thought that's got to be something special. Um, so I took a look and yeah, yeah, it was all right. Um, I loved the movie suggestion box, by the way. I assume that's downstairs in the cinema. Um, for those that didn't see the post, they've got a, a box down in the foyer where people write down suggestions of movies that they would like to see. And somebody bought The Human Centipede. Good God. <laughs> Out of all the wonderful, brilliant movies in the world, classics, somebody put Human Centipede. Seriously? And I, you went you hopped straight on the defence, Jason, and said, it wasn't me, it wasn't me. <laughs> I wouldn't be bothered if it was you, mate. It's just not something that I would watch personally, but it just made me think of all the bloody films in the world. They picked that one. So, oh God, pick it up on bloody DVD or something. You don't want to see that on the big screen, surely. Somebody obviously does. Um, and you commented on that After the World Ends book. Um, I'm going through a bit of a thing with books at the moment. I'm, I'm ordering them right, left and centre. Um, I showed off two or three last week that I got. Um... And you put the After the World's Ends books is really good. Book is really good. It is bringing back a lot of memories of old eighties VHS rentals. Um, for those of you who haven't seen it, it's a book called After the World Ends, and it's both basically um, detailing a lot of um, post-apocalyptic movies 
in the vein of Mad Max, um, Exterminators of the Year 3000 was one, as I remember. Um, but the book looked handsome, um, so I will be uh, grabbing a copy of that at some point. And over the next few weeks, I will be showing that one off, I'm sure. <laughs> so, and you round it off with, we've had Cocaine Bear, we've had Cocaine Shark, we've even had Crack Coon. Yeah, I'm not sure you get away with a title like that in Britain. <laughs> a meth gator. But are we ready for Cocaine Werewolf? Absolutely, bring it on. Guy, you said, I'm going to say no. <laughs> it doesn't surprise me. <laughs> so, oh God, thanks for that, Jace. Much appreciated, mate. Great to hear from you as usual. Jason P. Um, bugger all with that, wrong with that vid, mate. Stop whittling. I, th I think I was panicking last week because it, it just didn't feel right. And you all know why it didn't feel right now, but obviously you didn't realise at the time. Um, but uh, no, it, 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 no, it, it wasn't my finest hour, let's put it that way. Um, and your days of 30 minute weekend videos are over. We give you so much to talk, talk about what you asked us to do, which I did ask you to do that, that even a 45 minute video would seem short now. Um, I've said it before and I'll say it again, an hour is probably long enough. I, I think even you surely would struggle after that to watch it in one go anyway. Um, so we'll see how we go. Kermo got dropped because he only had one listener. How dare you? I assume that's alluding to me. <laughs> he had a lot of listeners. People love Mark Kermo, apart from Guy, who thinks he's a prick. <laughs> love the new hoodie. It's not new, mate. I've had it ages. I just never had the chance to really wear it inside because the heating wasn't working last week. Music biopics. I'll only watch them if I'm interested in the artist. And Amy Winehouse is one I definitely won't be watching. Not interested in her life story one bit. So you can safely say she's not in my top 50 artists. <laughs> Keep up the good work, mate, and take it easy. I will do, Jace. I appreciate that. Um, I will watch the Amy Winehouse one. I'm not a massive fan, but Rob is. So I'm going to kind of be... Uh, I'm kind of stuck with that one. Um, I will give it a go. Um, I'm sure the life story will be interesting enough, but I, I think I pretty much know everything that I need to know about her. Um, she was obviously addicted to drink and drugs. It, it, it's pretty much the same route that a lot of them take. Um, I enjoyed uh, The Doors with Val Kilmer. I mean, my God. Jim Morrison, total legend. Um, just as a bit of trivia, I actually visited his grave um, I took a trip to Paris probably 20 years ago uh, with a friend. Absolutely loved it. It's a place I'd always wanted to go. Um, I had the chance to go uh, for three four days. Went over and I said, the one thing that I want to see above the Eiffel Tower, the Louvre, all of that, I want to see Jim Morrison's grave. So we went to Pearl Cher's Cemetery, spent about an hour walking around trying to find it. Um, finally found somebody that spoke English <laughs> who directed us to it. He actually took us there. And it was not what I was expecting. Um, I expected some kind of a massive headstone, like a shrine. It wasn't. It was a very small, um, very unassuming little headstone covered in candles and flowers. But otherwise, you'd never have known. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed the, uh, the biopic of The Doors. So I will be taking a look at the Amy Winehouse one, but mostly because Rob wants to watch it. So... Uh, thanks for that, Jason. Much appreciated. What we're on 23 minutes. Let's see. I should do it to get through this one. Higgis, Stephen King, part two. Listen to it yesterday, guys. Cracking episode. Um, looking forward to Miss Violet's collectibles, by the way. It's not something I ever got into, um, as you know. Um, I've only got a couple of sort of figures and stuff like that. Nothing like what you've got. Um, but I'm certainly looking forward to seeing the collectibles that you've got. Absolutely. Happy birthday, by the way. Happy 40th birthday. I'll emphasize the 40. <laughs> See, this guy did. I figure I can get away with it as well. No, happy birthday, sweetheart. I hope you had a nice day. Um, yeah, Netflix. You were talking about having just acquired um, Prime and you were trying to not make your watch list too big. My watch list on Prime and Netflix is immense. And when you couple that with you know, BFI and all the other ones I've got. Um, it, it is difficult to choose something. I'll, I'll look at it some nights and think, oh my God, where do I even start? So I kind of get that. Um, 
One movie I would recommend to you while we're on the subject of Stephen King is one called Stephen King on Screen, which is a documentary I watched on Sky Arts uh, probably about a month ago. Thoroughly enjoyed it. A lot of talking heads talking about Stephen King, talking about his books, talking about his movies, actors that appeared in his movies. Really, really good. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, some good insights on the way the man works. Um, so yeah, if, if you're into your Stephen King movies as a documentary, that is superb. Um, right, you went through some honourable honorable mentions. Now I'm assuming these were books and films. Doctor Sleep, uh, Salem's Lot and Silver Bullet. Silver Bullet I do remember. Um, obviously I remember Salem's Lot because I was talking about it last week. Doctor Sleep I haven't seen yet. Um, what I want to do is listen to The Shining and watch The Shining, the movie. And then move on to Doctor Sleep. Silver Bullet, Corey Haim, and as you say, the man with the manky teeth, Gary Busey. I don't remember much about it. It's a long time since I watched it. It was out on Thorn EMI Big Box Rental at the video store. I remember it well. And I remember taking it home one night and thinking, wow, that was good. That was really, really good. For saying it was um, a movie based on a book that I'd never heard of, which, as you said, was called Cycle of the Werewolf. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed it and I would love to see it again I um, don't know whether it's got a Blu-ray release over here but I will try and track one down and take another look at that um, Christine was your first choice killer car movies I do love them um, my favourite as you know one of them is The Car from 1977 starring James Brolin I think I showed that one off last week or the week before on something else obviously Duel uh, Steven Spielberg's immense movie from 1971 it was absolutely brilliant and also as a mention does anybody anybody remember a movie called Killdozer literally about a killer bulldozer <laughs> it was a TV movie from about 1974 not as stupid as it sounds I do need to watch it again I've managed to grab hold of a copy and I do need to take it in again to remind me um, of basically the ins and outs of the story but I don't think there are many ins and outs of the story in this one do you guys know of any more um, sort of killer automobile or car movies let me know uh, because I've, I've suddenly got an interest in them again um, let's see I have seen Christine <laughs> guys yes um, it's, it's not a case of tone salitis as you called it I have seen Christine many times and love it uh, so your next one was Stephen King on writing, giving you the advice of write about what you know. Um, that's a piece of advice I could actually take well, take to the website with me when I'm writing reviews and stuff like that. Uh, people have said just write exactly how you would talk about it. So yeah, that's a good piece of advice. I like that. Um, and I will be taking that on board when I relaunch the website. Under the Dome, loved the series. I also hate it when they cancel series before the end especially before the end of a book it just winds me up so now i will usually wait until a series gets a second season then i will watch uh, the first series because i can't be asked to invest hours and hours in a series in a series only to find out at the end that guess what it's been cancelled oh so we're not going to find out what happens then brilliant thanks for that guys so yeah i usually wait until it, it gets a second or a third season um, and then I will sort of dive into it. Um, the Green Mile, yes, I have seen it, but a long, long time ago. Um, it's another one that I need to revisit. Um, it's a long movie, obviously, sort of three hours. Um, so it is, it is one that I want to take in again. Shawshank Redemption, seen that as well. Somebody mentioned to me this week, and I can't remember who it is. If you're watching this, just shout up. Um, somebody told me that there is a remake of the Shawshank Redemption in the works. Why? Why would you even touch a movie like that? There is absolutely nothing wrong with it. And it's not that old either. So I'm going to look into that and I'll come back to you with that one. But it doesn't um, it doesn't bode well at all. Um, and Callie, the return of Callista Valentine. About time. Can't wait. Ah, <sighs> Yeah, I've missed her. I've missed her. Definitely. So, yeah, looking forward to that. Looking forward to, to you uh, taking the mask off and uh, let's have the real you again. Looking forward to that. And next week, we've got mothers in movies. Guy says, stop or my mum will shoot. Really? 
I thought that was one of mine. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to seeing who comes up. I'm guessing Norman Bates uh, will get a look in. Um, I, I, think you, I think you've already said this. Norman Bates will get a look in. Pamela Voorhees, can't wait for that one. Looking forward to that episode. So great work. Keep it up, guys. Um, as I say, you make my Saturday mornings go by so quick. Um, it, it just gives me an hour where I can just, you know, clean everything and just listen to you guys. It's brilliant. So thanks for that, guys. Right. I'm going to take a quick break. I'll be back. We're up to 30 minutes. I'll be back in a second. And we're back. Um, right, I've just had a quick look at the notes um, that I've got left to get through. Um, bringing it in under an hour, I think is going to be a tall order, but we'll see how we go. Um, as I say, the plan is to um, anything that I don't get time to cover, um, to knock it over to uh, to next week's video to give me a bit of a head start. But we'll see how we go. Um, Dave Oliver, Savage Zombie Reviews, really enjoyed your top 10 regular movie watches please do more like that i love these lists i adore them as i said in the comments um the ones that you mentioned these are movies that you watch um as you say regularly uh first one was dread um i saw the first 10 minutes of that on film four uh probably uh, a couple of months ago really really enjoyed it um unfortunately fell asleep <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't see the end of it and by the time I went back to it it had disappeared but um, I will be taking a look at that one because it did look really really good quite entertaining The Purge Anarchy I've never seen a Purge movie um, I used to work with a guy who loved them all of them and he was constantly on at me gotta watch The Purge gotta watch The Purge so um, I will be taking a look at that one You're Next I remember you talking about this one with Mike the Real Fifth Beetle when you did your top 32 um, slashes list which I think was based on somebody else's list I remember you talking about this one very very fondly um, I watched the trailer uh, probably a couple of nights ago and thought wow that does look good so it's gone on my watch list uh, that one the collector never heard of it um, but again looked at the synopsis on the IMDB and it looks all right so that's another one I'm going to be taking on um, house that was your first ever review you were saying on the channel um, I can't remember what mine was I'd need to have a look um, but it, it, it's good that you remember things like that um, I have seen House but a long long time ago um, I don't remember being overly impressed with it which is probably why I've not been back for a second view um, but times change and I would now like to take a look at it so I will be having a look at that Constantine um, Keanu Reeves, is it something to do with angels? Something like that. Um, again, never seen it, but you speak about it with such passion. Um, I do want to take a look. Big Trouble in Little China. You watch that at least 10 times a year, you were saying. Um, I saw it for the first time uh, probably a couple of years ago. Really, really enjoyed it. Um, I'm definitely up for a rewatch. Um, not sure I could watch it 10 times a year. Um, that's obviously definitely one for you. Uh, but yeah, I did enjoy it. I thought it was great. Um, the Guest. I think I accidentally bumped into a clip of this on YouTube. Um, isn't it something to do with an older brother protecting a younger guy, a younger brother from bullies and stuff like that? Might be wrong. Well, I've got the wrong one. Resident Evil Damnation. Um, that's not me because it's based on a computer game. Um, it's I just don't do movies based on computer games um, maybe you guys can change my mind on that one Doomsday I think that was another one wasn't it um, I do remember seeing the trailer to this a long long time ago and thinking that actually looks all right uh, but I never uh, never got a chance to watch it so it's another one that's gone on the watch list the ever-growing watch list so thanks for that one Dave really enjoyed that video I look forward um, to seeing more of them I think you posted one this week on the top five uh, computer games or games that you like to play I will take a look at it but that's that's a world completely alien to me is <laughs> computer games and collectibles um, but yeah really enjoyed that one and look forward to the next one right uh, just bear with me while I just scroll up if it'll let me oh yeah okay Empire Magazine uh, the new issue is out on the 14th I think which is next week so I've got to get through this one as quickly as possible um, there was a post on Facebook uh, on the Empire magazine 
page um, on the Jake, Gyllen Jake Gyllenhaal's remake of Roadhouse. Um, and they put Jake Gyllenhaal hits hard in Doug Lyman's punchy remake streaming on Prime Video later this month. Read the Empire review. Now, I've been through that issue of Empire and I can't find that review anywhere. Um, so I'm assuming it's on their website. I will take a look or it'll turn up in the um, next issue, which is out next week. So I will take a look at that. Um, I didn't take a look at the review, but I did take a look at the comments underneath the post uh, from various people who've either seen it uh, one way or another or uh, looking forward to seeing it. I'll just read some of these out now. We may have to eat our words and eat a bit of humble pie with this one, guy. guys. I don't know. Um, first one, four stars. I was praying for this to be good. And does Patrick Swayze's original version justice? Um, now, maybe it's been released on Prime in America, and maybe these a lot of the re these reviews are from that. Uh, we don't get it until later this month. Um, I'll read a few more of these out. Uh, I'm really glad this got a good review and four stars. I'm a huge fan of the original. Now I've got this to look forward to and enjoy. Great. Uh, another one, Jake rarely disappoints. All the way back to Donnie Darko. He's most mostly been very selective on his films, only a couple of bad films along the way. I need to watch more of his stuff. Uh, there is a movie of his called Enemy uh, to do with spiders, uh, which I would love to see. Um, and I spotted it on, I think it was Film 4 or BBC iPlayer. I'm not sure which it was, but I wouldn't mind a look at that one. Um, some more here. High hopes for this. Love the original. Uh, this looks good. Sam Elliott, Sam Elliott showing up would make it golden. I know he died in the original, but still, yeah, that would be a bit of a problem. <laughs> Empire would give Sharknado four stars if released today. Not much faith in Empire's reviews there. Uh, what's the problem with coming up with original ideas? Leave existing movies alone and try something else. And another person wrote another unnecessary remake. Leave things alone. So that's the flip side of it. Um, I'm not sure whether it's a movie I, I would enjoy. Um, I think Guy, you had reservations about Conor McGregor being in it. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll give it a go if you lot watch it and I'll see what I think we can compare notes on it. But I know there are one or two members of the group that would not touch it with a barge pole uh, due to the fact that they do love the original movie. And quite rightly so. Um, but we'll see what happens when it actually lands on Prime and you, you lot basically start talking about it um, because it will develop and buzz. It's already developing that and it's not even been released yet. Um, but yeah, I'll see what you lot say before I uh, make a decision on whether to watch that or, or not. It's not really my kind of film, um, but I said that about the original and I really enjoyed it when I got around to it. Lee Barber. Oh dear, another cinema going. UK's oldest working cinema, Birmingham's Electric, is closing down. Um, the screening of Wicked Little Letters at 8.30 on Thursday was the last showing at the Electric Birmingham in Station Street. And they've put in the report, no further listings are featured on the Independent Cinema's website with no explanation for the, the closure offered. Apparently it was built in 90, 1897 as a music hall and has been a cinema since 1909 when it started showing silent movies. God, they were the days. I, I would love to have seen that place back then and to have watched something like a Chaplin short or a Laurel and Hardy movie, Buster Keaton, Fatty Arbuckle, anything like that. I'd have loved to have seen those on the big screen. Um, staff have confirmed the electric is to close for the foreseeable future. There had been concerns for the future of the historic cinema for several weeks. Lee Yu commented, so sad, I saw some good films there when I was younger. Hopefully it gets saved. They, people do tend to sort of leap in at the last minute and rescue these places. I'm hoping it happens with that. I do remember when the Burton Odeon closed down. My God, that was a sad day. I believe the last show in there, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, because you guys will probably remember better. I think the last show in there um was the world is not enough i believe uh the pierce brosnan bond movie uh, which i did see i do remember going to the last showing i'm not sure it was that movie but i do remember going to the last ever showing and feeling extremely sad the minute i walked out onto the street thinking i'm never going to see that again never going to go in there again and it was it was it was a tough time that i'd, I'd spent so many hours, so many weeks, days, years in there, just watching some of the most magical movies. I saw the original Star Wars there, 
uh, but the movie, uh, the jazz singer, Friday the 13th, the original, there were so many, I could reel off so many movies that I saw there. My first ever movie, Le Mans, Steve McQueen. My dad took me to see that at Burton Odeon, never forgot it. Um, so yeah, I get what you're saying about these places closing down. I know we've got Cineworld and all these multiplexes, but they're not the same and they really aren't. I know the sound systems are better and the seating's more comfortable and this, that and the other. But looking back on the Odeon and the electric in Birmingham as you do, um, it's it's not the point that, that they had something, they had magic, they had, they were just wonderful places, wonderful old places and we miss them, we do. So thanks for that Lee. Um, Jason P, never seen it, week 10 of 50. Now you said the day before, uh, you'll love, never seen it to, uh, this week, you'll love it, you'll love it. Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Oh my God. <laughs> you did a brief synopsis. Roy Neary, an Indiana electric lineman, finds his quiet and ordinary daily life turned upside down after a close encounter with a UFO, spurring him to an obsessed cross-country quest for answers as a momentous event approaches. So, you put, I've tried three times to get past the first half hour of this, probably in the 80s, 90s and 2000s. And I just never got past the bit where that pile of dung or whatever it was, was discovered in his house. I just, <laughs> sorry, I just turned it off. I think I was always bored up until that point anyway. So as this movie was on film for this week, I was determined to watch it all from start to finish. I even moved my phone away from me to stop me just picking it up just to look at it. Well, for the first time ever, I did watch the movie all the way through and I was so happy when the credits came up. <laughs> this wasn't what I was expecting. Have to say it was shite. I will never watch it. I will never watch it again. <laughs> so disappointed. Do you know what? It's what makes this group what it is. Um, we all have such a varied, different taste in movies and TV shows. As I've said before, it would be no fun whatsoever if we all had the same taste, and it wouldn't. It's the banter and, you know, the different tastes that make this what it is. So um, I didn't see that coming, I've got to admit. I thought you were going to say it was all right, it wasn't bad. I probably wouldn't watch it again, but it was all right. But, oh, my God. Uh, Mark commented, obviously, I know it, as Tony has told us, it's his favourite movie about 50 times. Only 50 times? <laughs> we need to put that right. But I've never seen it. Mark, um, would you like it? question is do you like science fiction movies um that are kind of science fact ish as well i'd be very curious to know what you think of it if you're brave enough to take it on um after especially after that review <laughs> i think it's wonderful as i've always said and i will never stop um trying to convince people that you know you really need to watch this because it's amazing um but again it's a time thing i watched it for the first time 50 years ago, I was absolutely blown away by it. Um, obviously, it fares a little differently nowadays. This film is nearly 50 years old. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if you want to watch it, Mark, give it a go and let me know what you think. Um, I'd be very curious about that. Um, Jason, you said, I just thought I'd give it a go. I'd never watch Star Wars, though. I know I wouldn't get through 10 minutes of that. Just not my thing at all. There you go, you see. That, that typifies it. it. It's just not your thing. Um, same as extremely violent movies are not my thing, um, you know, I do make the occasional exception if you lot sort of dare me to watch it. Um, but as a rule, I would never ever watch anything like uh, sort of the last, uh, not the last, I keep calling it the last temptation of Christ, the passion of the Christ, um, Apocalypto, but I know uh, Chris would like me to take a look at those, so I will be watching them at some point, um, but usually I won't watch anything you know, too violent, right in Soul Block 11 or whatever it was, or Soul Block 99, never in a million fucking years would I ever attempt to watch that. So I do get that it's just not your thing. Um, guy, you posted a picture of me, <laughs> presumably, presumably reading that review with the, the word triggered splashed all across it. No, I mean, how can I possibly be angry? God, you know what I mean? You like it or you don't like it. Um, I've watched movies before that have got amazing reviews and 
I didn't get it. You know, Deadpool, as I've said before, everybody, you've got to watch Deadpool. It's brilliant. Deadpool's amazing. Watched it. I think I got 20 minutes into it and thought, is this really the movie that everybody's on about? Have I got the right one? It just didn't work for me at the time. But who knows? Two, three years down the line, I could watch it and think, what the fuck were you thinking there? That's brilliant. That's how it goes, isn't it? So, uh, disappointed you didn't like it, Jase, but I do absolutely, completely get it. Wonka, on the other hand, you watch that. A um, couple of uh, comments on the fact that you were going to watch it. Uh, Mark, you said Wonka was all right. Nothing I'd shout about, but I'm not overly fussed about the Gene Wilder version, and I've never seen Johnny Depp's take on it either. Um, I love the Gene Wilder version, never get bored of it. Johnny Depp version I've never seen. I think Rob's seen it and he said it was all right. I, I just can't tend to stick with the original. Uh, Guy, you said love, in capital letters, love, the Gene Wilder version. Johnny Depp one is good as well. Have a look at it. Maybe, possibly. Um, uh, Jason, uh, love the Gene Wilder version. Probably seen it about 30 times. Johnny Depp's is okay too, seen that about five times. Now, your thoughts on Wonka. Here we go, completely different. We both loved it and thought it was brilliant. Definitely not shite. There wasn't one bit I didn't like of it, just under two hours long, perfect. You see, that surprised me. I, I, I would have heard on the side of you thinking it wasn't brilliant, um, but Guy said, if you like it, I'll give it a go. You'll do for me. You're better at film reviews than Mark Commode. A eh, Tony? Here it comes. <laughs> Jason is far more concise and not a 50s throwback knobhead. What? How dare you? <laughs> I enjoy his reviews. What can I say? I could listen to him talking for hours. Um, if you saw me watching his videos on YouTube, um, you'd probably see the word swoon coming across. <laughs> I think he's brilliant. I just, I just love, I love the way he talks about movies, um, and I genuinely do wish that I could do that. Um, Rob even said the other night I was watching one on YouTube on the big screen telly in the front there, and um, he said to me, "Is that what you do?" And I said, "No, it is not what I do. <laughs> Absolutely not. I don't review movies like that. Um, I just basically say whether I enjoy them, what I enjoyed about them. I, I can't talk the way that he does." Um, he is completely unique, so no, <laughs> sorry, but I don't. Um, Jason, you said, I'd love to hear what you think of Wonka as you're not a fan of musicals. Neither am I, but I love Mary Poppins, Bedknobs, Chitty, etc. They are musicals, but you won't get me watching Greatest Showman, Moulin Rouge, or any of that shite. I haven't seen Greatest Showman. I saw Moulin Rouge a long time ago um, and thought it was all right. It was a bizarre, weird film, though. Um, it had a bit of a disco soundtrack at one point, as I remember. I, I thought, you're kind of watching this scene, you're not really listening to it, and then you think, hang on a minute, this, this wasn't around in this time. <laughs> not a hundred years ago. Um, but it was all right. Uh, so thanks for that, Jace. Um, I will be taking Wonka in at some point. Whether I'll be buying it on 4K or not, I don't know. I shall see. It may be one that I can wait for streaming. We'll see how we go on that. Um, Jason Kerr, oh my God, you put um, a trailer on for a movie called Infested. It's a French spider movie. There's a lot of spider movies about at the moment, um, including Sting, uh, which looks very similar to Infested. They both look as creepy as hell, but anything with spiders in looks as creepy as hell to me. Um, apparently this one comes to Shudder in April. I will definitely have a look at that. Um, Without a doubt, the trailer just looks brilliant. Can't wait. Loving Trashy Tuesdays, by the way. I want to watch Night Beast. I know you said it's pretty rubbish, but I watched the trailer and it, it to me it looks amazing. <laughs> but you you know my taste in movies as will uh, probably come out a, a little bit later on. Um, it's a Vinegar Syndrome release though. So Obviously, I won't be importing it on Blu-ray uh, because it won't play um, in the UK. Um, I do wish we could do away with all this region locking crap. There are lots of movies that I would love to import from America. That would be one of them. Um, 
but obviously it's not worth it. I've been bitten by it twice before and it's not going to happen again. Um, loved your February collection update, by the way. Um, <clears throat> I'd not heard of a lot of them. Girl on the Third Floor. Looks a good haunted house movie to me, that one. Half Baked, stoner comedy. It looks really funny. I watched the trailer for it and I thought, I could get into that. That looks all right. Man with the Iron Fist, a Quentin Tarantino movie. How could you go wrong with that one? Um, I've never heard of it, but as soon as I watched the trailer, I thought, yes. So I could very well be ordering um, a Blu-ray copy of that one. H.P. Lovecraft's Dagon, directed by Stuart Gordon. I remember Stuart Gordon's output from the 80s, from beyond, that kind of thing. Um, really, really enjoyed that one. Reanimator. God, wow, what a movie. Um, Mirrors and Mirrors 2. I remember the original Mirrors, I've seen it, this is Kiefer Sutherland. Um, I remember it being extremely violent and quite nasty. Um, pump up volume, never seen it. We dis we talked about this one a few weeks ago. Uh, this is one of Christian Slater's early movies um, as a DJ, he plays a DJ. Um, never seen it, but I would be very, very up for watching that one. Jersey Shore Shark Attack. Oh yes, bring it on. Chud 2, Bud the Chud. Bud the Chud? You were a bit disappointed in that one, so that kind of put me off that one. But I will watch the original Chud, I've never seen it. American Sniper. Got it on Blu-ray, but never watched it. The Happening. Is this the one where everybody was jumping off the buildings at the beginning? I remember that being quite nasty. Megalodon, The Frenzy. Bring it on. The Jester. Yeah, it looks very like The Black Phone, which I haven't seen, but I have seen the trailer for it. Um, and it also looks like it's got a terrifier vibe to it so um you did a, a review of neon maniacs which i've not watched yet um but i listened to a podcast where that movie was talked about a few weeks ago um and it got some very positive reviews it's another one that i remember seeing in the video store when i worked there um but i didn't used to watch that kind of movie back then um now all of a sudden I'm well up for them, so I will be uh, sort of watching your review, and I will be taking that movie in. Talking of rubbish movies, as we weren't, um, The Velocipaster. Okay. Mm. Jason, you posted this one. Still the best movie summary ever. Here we go. After losing his parents, a priest travels to China, where he inherits... A mysterious ability that allows him to turn into a dinosaur. At first horrified by this new power, a hooker <laughs> convinces him to use it to fight crime and ninjas. <laughs> Sorry, but how can you not like that? That that sounds fucking awesome to me. That is a movie that I would absolutely watch and I will be watching it. Rob Gear, morning Rob. I think I've got a soulmate here. Uh, he commented, is this a real movie? And Jason put, sadly, yeah, Tony has just bought it from Amazon, probably. I haven't, but I will be getting it. <laughs> Mark, if this doesn't pop up on the uh, what you bought this week in a future episode of Tony Time, I'm going to be disappointed. <laughs> and Rob put, uh, might give this a watch too, as it intrigues me. Rob showed an interest. Um, Rob works uh, at my place. He... Uh, he showed an interest in um, Rubber, the tire, the killer tire movie, and said that he thought it was all right. It was just funny. <laughs> so, and now he's showing an interest in this. I think I'm going to be able to convert him to be watching a lot of these, what you lot term as crap movies. I absolutely fucking love them. Um, movies like Beast of Bunny. Um, there are so many. What was the one called about the... Um, the carousel unicorn that breaks off and goes on on a like a murderous rampage. <laughs> I remember seeing the trailer to that one. I can't remember what it's called, uh, but I did actually try to get that one, and it's damn near impossible to get hold of. I couldn't even download a copy. That's how rare it is. Uh, but I might have another go at getting that one. But Rob, if you're watching this, <laughs> I'm going to be talking about these movies non-stop to you. I promise you. The more that I find out about you, will know about them as well. Um, as for the Velocipasta, I took a look at some of the reviews on uh, the IMDb. Uh, read some of these out very quickly. Ten stars, absolute garbage, a must watch. <laughs> oh God, this is nothing but a hilarious ride from start to finish. A mangled heap of god-awful props, dialogue, 
costuming, lighting, special effects and acting jammed into an inexplicable plot by a genius director who manages to make a very bad movie on purpose without any shred of pretense or shame. <laughs> Good on him. The ninja fight scene is what Mortal Kombat would look like if it got hijacked by a kindergarten drama class. <laughs> Oh, all you're making me do is want to watch it even more, guys. Um, there's another one. An amazing work of art. It had me hooked in the first few minutes. It then proceeded to mesmerise me with superb acting, a profoundly deep plot line, and subtle directing that provided a haunting sense of what comes next when watching the movie. Well done, folks. I'm a better, better man for watching this. I'm fairly sure I will be as well. Um, somebody else thought, I got laid by watching this movie. <laughs> I told a lot of hot girls about this movie and they all wanted to see it. We ended up watching it at my place and we had a great night. The night and the movie both finished with a happy ending. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to watch this. Oh, blimey. So that, that's the Velocipaster. So, Rob, if that hasn't con convinced you to take a look at it, I don't know what will. Uh, right. Uh, let's see. Always oh, another one. Great family fun. Without a doubt, the Citizen Kane of movies about a priest who is cursed to transform into a velociraptor and eat bad people. <laughs> My 13-year-old son said, wow. <laughs> and somebody else put, I'd rather eat acid-dipped mushrooms and watch a dog give birth before I watch this abomination again. <laughs> Basically, I think people are going to love it. I really do. I, I will certainly take a look at it and I'll be giving you my view of it as soon as I have uh, taken a look at it. Right, I've got five minutes, so I'm going to get through this as quickly as possible because I'm determined to bring this um, in under an hour if I can. Um, let's see. Uh, bin it or keep it for this week. Piranha 3DD, the sequel to the one that was bin it or keep it last week, which was Piranha, I believe, 3D or something like that. Pretty much the same. Um, it was all right. I mean, would I watch it again? I don't think so. Um, so that one's going to the charity shop. That is a definite bin it. I know you all wanted me to keep the original, but I have got a copy on one of my hard drives. The same as this one. Um, I don't feel the need to be clogging up my shelf with this one. So that is a definite bin it. Um, the movies that I'm taking in from this book, I still haven't watched Last House on the Left. I wasn't sure whether I'd actually got it or not, but it turns out I have. So um, I'm going to be taking a look at this and probably pairing it uh, with a screening of the um, remake, which actually got quite positive reviews when it came out, considering it was it was based around this absolute classic. I do remember seeing this many, many years ago and thinking what a deeply unpleasant, horrible, depressing movie it was. Um, Probably not the thing, kind of, kind of thing I should be watching right now, but um, I promise I'll take a look at it. So I will be having a look at that. Um, it will probably be a bin it or keep it. Um, the reason it will almost certainly be a keep it is there are some awesome little documentaries on this, uh, which I'm going to watch. Um, and if they live up to expectations, I may end up keeping this, but certainly not for the movie. I get the feeling I'm, I'm going to think it's just as horrible as it was the first time. And last night... Pizza and a movie night. Abba the movie. I just wanted something light-hearted. We both did last night. Something a little bit just easy on the eye. Um, nothing too depressing. Nothing too horrible. You couldn't go wrong with this. Um, I still remember going to see this at Burton Odeon. I'd never seen cues like this. It went all the way around the back of the Odeon. Jason, anybody that lives in Burton will know this. Um, it got, went right the way around the back of the Odeon and halfway halfway down Station Street, near enough to the brewery entrance. That's how popular this was. These guys were huge. And this movie was just amazing. I think it's got some of the best, most exciting concert footage I think I've ever seen of any film. Um, pretty much every song that they sing you know, because they, they were all massive hits in the day. Um, it's a movie because it's based around... Um, a radio DJ who was trying to get an interview with them for a two hour have a special on his channel um, and it just basically details his attempts to get past bodyguards um, all this sort of thing and you've got all this concert footage sort of wrapped around it this is brilliant if you've never seen it and you are 
remotely interested in ABBA or the music or anything like that, this is a wonderful film. As I say, some of the best concert footage you will ever see. Thoroughly enjoyed it, seen it many times before. I will almost certainly be watching this again at some point soon. It looks glorious on Blu-ray. Not watched the interviews yet, but I will be taking those in. So, right, that's it for this week. Um, oh, hang on, Jason, you were commenting on this. The big question is, do you think ABBA makes it into my top 50 artists? Do I look like an ABBA fan? You like your 70s, so I'm going to say yes to that. It's only a guess, but I'm going to say yes. Right, thanks ever so much for joining me, guys. I'm going to let you go. As I say, I wanted to bring this in under an hour, and I've just about managed it. I've got a few bits to carry over to next week, but nothing... Uh, Nothing important. Steve Mack, I'm going to be watching your movie video uh, later this morning, by the way. So I'll have some comments about that next week. I just haven't had time to catch up with it yet. Um, so thanks again for joining me, guys. Have a brilliant week. Um, and I will see you all again about the same time next week. Take care, everybody. See you soon. ta -la.